Hey guys, the Bank of England just sent a massive shockwave by increasing the base rate by 0.5% to a whopping 5%. On one hand, this is great for savers who've been diligent with their finances and have been waiting for that opportunity to get a bit of a return on their money. On the other hand, this is a catastrophe for a lot of households who have mortgages, who are either on variable rates right now and will feel the pain immediately or who are currently on a fixed rate and soon to come out of those fixed rates. I completely sympathize with your situation right now because it's, it's a complete nightmare out there on the streets. A lot of people are struggling financially and as I will explain to you on, on today's video, this means that a lot more people now have to go and find a lot more money every single month because these rate rises are really hitting their pockets directly. So you don't want to unpack what this rate rise means for all of us. What does it mean for your, your savings, your investments, your mortgages? You know, what does it mean for every aspect of your life right now? And I want to be share, I want to share with you on this video what exactly I think you should be doing practically in order to move forward. Okay. Now, this rate rise is a very interesting one because first of all, it's the highest it's been since 2008. It's the 13th increase by the Bank of England since December 2021. And of the nine people on the Monetary Policy Committee of the Bank of England, seven of those people voted to increase by a whopping 0.5%, which is a lot higher than a lot of people were predicting in the markets. People thought it might go up by a 0.25% increase. And a lot of this has been driven by what's known as persistent inflation. And I'll be going into a lot of detail on what this is all about. Now, those seven people who chose to increase by 0.5% said, and here's, here's how they described their reasoning. They said that the second round effects in domestic pricing and wage developments, essentially price rises and wage increases, were having what they called external cost shocks and were likely to take longer to unwind than they had uh, expected. So essentially, things are taking longer and inflation is remaining persistent. Whereas the other two people who chose to keep rates as they were, they essentially thought that the rates, the increases that they had had before were still having an impact. And so they didn't see a reason to increase uh, the, int the base rate of interest at this moment in time. So do bear with me as I look at my notes here to make sure I'm communicating accurate and factual information to you guys in order to help you to move forward. Let's talk about the economy. Let's start there. So the update on the economy is that they said the headline consumer price inflation, so the CPI rate, had continued to decline in the euro area and in the United States. So looking internationally now, but remaining persistent in the UK, as I mentioned earlier. Okay. In fact, the, the, the increase in what they call core inflation was a lot higher than they'd expected. So, and I'll come to that in a, in a moment. Looking at GDP, uh, for the economy. Uh, the GDP outlook for Q3 of 2023, according to the Bank of England, was more uncertain. Okay, but they'll continue to judge, uh, they continue to judge that the underlying uh, quarterly growth rate of around a quarter of a percent was a reasonable projection for GDP for Q3. So essentially, I wouldn't hold my breath, not very much is going to happen with GDP as far as the UK is concerned. If anything, it, it, it's likely to go the other way. That's what I personally expect. The other update uh, worth mentioning from an e economic perspective is what they refer to as average weekly earnings. So they've said the average weekly earnings, so a measure of pay, uh, growth has had increased by 0.5 percentage points to 7.6% in the three months to April, which is 0.5% percentage points above the expectation. So again, a lot of things seem to be coming as a bit of a surprise to the Bank of England, yeah? Which is why, in many ways, and you know, I don't know what you think, but in many ways, we don't seem to be able to get the inflation situation, you know, under control, okay? So again, uh, there's surprises in the data relating to, uh, relating to wages, okay? So that's the economic update. Obviously, there's more things they talked about internationally and, you know, nationally, but those are the core things that stood out to me when I read that report. Now, looking at inflation specifically, and I'll be coming to all the various areas in a moment. Inflation, CPI inflation rate was steady at 8.7%. Now, this is the key bit. 
But core inflation, when you strip out energy and you strip out food and you strip out the likes of alcohol and tobacco, core inflation rose to 7.1%. And this is the highest it's been in 30 years. Okay, so on one hand, CPI inflation is coming down, you know, looking 12 months back, but the core inflation is actually rising or remaining more persistent. Now, reading a bit closer, it said here that the core inflation rise was driven by the purchase of vehicles and recreational goods. This accounted for the majority of that rise in core inflation. Specifically, it said there are some issues around supply of two to three year old used cars. Okay, so a lot of people are, are trying to upgrade their cars or trying to get new cars or whatever, but that's causing uh, a spike in the core inflation. Now, what was interesting when we look at, and I, look, I looked at some data from the Financial Times, the Financial Times said that over the same period, core inflation was flat or declining for 28 out of the 35 countries that they were tracking. So the UK is a bit of an exception here because in other parts of the world, other major economies, we seem to be getting this inflation situation under some control. But for some reason, we don't seem to be doing that in the UK. Now, digging a bit, a bit deeper into inflation, it says here that services CPI, so the consumer price inflation, had risen from 6.9% in April to 7.4% in May, a 0.5 percentage point stronger than had been anticipated. Again, what was interesting about this one, services inflation, is that, and you would have probably guessed it, is driven by our holidays. So people who are booking flights, people who are booking holidays, Obviously, being the summer, people want to get away naturally. That has the impact of increasing what's known as services CPI, the inflation. Now, what was interesting, though, was on food, because you remember from my last update, food was a big component in what was driving inflation. However, this time around, it says here that food CPI had edged down to 18.3%. But this doesn't mean, though, this is the key thing, because this is something about language with these economists and people. When they say things like, oh, it's edged down, the inflation's come down, you might think, oh, yeah, that means food prices are going to come down. No, that means basically that they are not rising as quickly as they were before. Unfortunately, our food prices are going to still remain expensive. Okay, but on one hand, it's kind of good news that food inflation has edged down, okay? Then they said the headline consumer price inflation had continued to decline in the Euro area and United States, as I mentioned before. And this is the bit I wanted to mention, actually, because I think it's very important to know what the rates are, because it gives us a bit of a context uh, outside of the UK and comparing to what's going on in the world more generally, yeah? So we have that 8.7% number that I mentioned in May uh, for, um, for the UK. But that number, for, from a CPI perspective, compares to 6% in France, 6.3% in Germany, 7.1% across the whole of the EU, and wait for this, 2.7% in the US. And the UK, of course, from broad CPI perspective, is at 8.7%, okay? Other updates related to inflation are that wholesale energy prices have been declining, as I mentioned in my previous update. But unfortunately, this doesn't mean that your energy price, your energy bills are gonna be falling because you're not gonna really see the difference in that until around July when the price cap finally uh, falls below the energy price guarantee, okay? Overall, there are expectations that the service provider, so your internet provider, your um, whoever's providing you with a service will continue to pass on costs uh, to us essentially. You know, meaning that service price inflation will remain elevated, is the word they use, will remain elevated in the near term. If I had to summarize everything the Bank of England really said relating to inflation, it would be that essentially there's a big problem that they've got, which is that wages and prices are rising at the same time, making inflation a lot more harder to eradicate. What does that mean for us in translation? That spells more problems. That means more interest rate rises are expected. 
Don't even listen to anyone who says to you that they expect those interest rate rises to fall anytime soon. It's not going to happen. It will not happen this year and it's highly unlikely to even happen next year. So I'd say we all need to buckle up and start to really make some quite significant changes in our lives in order to prepare for what's inevitable if I'm kind of reading in between the lines. Let's now look at interest rates. Okay, as I mentioned earlier, that's giving some uh, thoughts on this, but I want to read you what the official line is from the Bank of England. They said that the market implied path for interest rates, pay attention to this, is that interest rates would now average around 5.5%, this is a key bet, over the next three years. We're in 2024. They're expecting that the average, and we know, we know, that when all when these people make their forecasts, and they're not the only ones, you look at market, every market participant, when they make these forecasts, they get them wrong. And they don't get them wrong in your favour or my favour. They get it wrong just so we hear what we need to hear. They're saying 5.5% over the next three years compared to what was 4.75% in my previous update. So picture that. If the official line is 5.5% over the next three years, Imagine what the reality is going to be, okay? Some of what they identified though, and what's happened since our last update in May, is that the mortgage market has gone completely bunkers. By that I mean rates have started to rise quite significantly. So a two-year fixed rate at a 75% loan to value had increased by around 0.9% since May. By that I mean like the actual rise, 0.9% increase, 90 basis points. Uh, to 5.6%, and a five-year uh, fixed rate product had increased by around 80 basis points, so 0.8% to around 5.1%. And last I checked, and I'll be talking to you about this shortly, mortgage rates had hit, had hit 6% and rising, okay? And a lot of the market right now uh, 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 essentially expect that the base rate itself will exceed or will hit 6% uh, by the end of the year. Yeah, potentially, potentially. Um, let's now look at mortgages and rents. You know, I've given you the, the update on inflation, on the economy, and that kind of stuff. Let's now make this real and see what that means for us tangibly. From a mortgage and rents perspective, if you are renting, so if you've got a mortgage right now on a tracker or variable rate, of which I believe around 1.4 million people currently do, this will be a straight hit to your pocket, unfortunately. Okay, uh, I've done some numbers here and, and, and my numbers show that if you've got a £250,000 borrowing, a mortgage, for example, that increase of 0.5% that just got announced, and this is the frustrating bit, will mean another £71 per month that you need to find. And let's not forget, this is on top of because last month it was increased by 0.25% and at that point you had to find another £36 a month. Now you have to find another £71 a month. Oh man, this is just like, this is like a slap in the face every time. And I understand, don't get me wrong, because I know there are people who say to me, Ken, inflation is ridiculous, obviously they need to increase uh, interest rates. I get it, like I know, like, I understand how basic economics works, like I, like I actually know how it works. But it's just, I also understand the true reality for people, which is that, man, 71, I went to the barber shop because if you want to know what's happening on the streets out, let's go to a barber shop. I went to have a haircut before I had this video, I made this video. And there's so many stories being told in the barber shop. Like this one girl who was, has been told, to, uh, telling a story said that she had her job, she, you know, doing really well, earning 70K a year, bought her own property, things were going well. And then guess what happens? Boom loses the job. And of course, it's panicking because you've got a new property, you've got a mortgage debt, and of course, you've got a little bit of an emergency fund, but that's all you've got. And I know there'll be many people out there who are not too far away from that reality. So as much as it's easy for me to tell you what's happening, I like for me, it's about empathy. It's about like really connecting to the true reality of what's happening for people, which is that these rate rises are not a joke. There's a reality of what this means for people and their households. In fact, I heard somebody else who said, when I went to the barber shop, they've had to pull their child out of nursery as a result of these rate rises. Another person said they've had to sell their home. 
take their children and their, uh, 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 together with their partner and move back into their parents' house because their parents had uh, spare two rooms at home. This is what people are, in fact, I wanna hear from you guys in the comments. What changes or sacrifices are you having to make as a result of these interest rate rises that are happening? Jump in the comments, let's keep it real and tell, tell us what's actually happening in your life right now or what you've been having to go through to make this a reality. Now, for a lot of people, the big question is, should you be fixing right now? Yeah, because so far, interest rates have been kind of, you know, obviously rising and, you know, people have been thinking, should it be a two-year fix or five-year fix or three-year fix or 10-year fix and what have you. What I can tell you, because I like to be really real, is that I know that those rates are not going to be falling anytime soon. And so if you really like the predictability of your finances, and I know these rates are high, you really want to consider these rates very, very strongly. I'll give you an example. I'm looking at Money Facts, the website. Let me look at it right now. As we speak, the best rates out there right now at a 60% loan to value is 5.74% from Nationwide. By the way, I don't, I'm not recommending anybody. I'm just telling you what I'm seeing. Everything I share is not a personal recommendation to you, by the way, I'm just sharing just to give us context, okay? That's a 60% loan to value, which I know most people don't have. And if you come down to more reasonable loan to values, like an 80% loan to value, the rate, the best rate right now I'm seeing is 6.39% by Gen H for a fixed rate at two years. Then you look at three years. Again, the same story. Nationwide seem to have the best rates right now at three years, 5.34%, which is lower than the 5.74% for a two year fixed, naturally, okay? And then you look at a five year fix, again, Nationwide have the lowest rate there at 5.24%, uh, assuming a 60% loan to value. And if you carry on, you've got Gen H and all these other uh, providers who are offering you for a five year fixed, 5.99% at loan to values of uh, up to around 80%, okay? This is really, really astonishing what's going on right now and as it's been dubbed out there it's a mortgage time bomb it's actually gonna get a lot worse i hate to actually say that but i know i i, I feel what's coming because there's only one way these rates are going to go and the only way they're going to go unfortunately is up and so we need to really think very deeply about what this means for our lifestyles and i'm, I'm going to be sharing some tips later so do please make sure you hang around because for me this matters i have family members who have mortgages i have friends who have mortgages i have neighbors who have mortgages so i'm not just sharing this as someone who's on who you know on the internet i'm sharing this because i really care and i understand the implications for people's livelihoods right now okay um so feel free to check out websites like Money Facts, there are probably others, but it's a good it's a good spot to check out. If you're on a fixed rate mortgage, I, I hate to spell out the obvious, but nothing happens right now to you, which is great news. Uh, around three out of four people who have mortgages are on fixed rate mortgages. So those people remain exempt for now, very sadly, because uh, I believe around 1.54 million people are expected to come out of fixed rate mortgages. And in fact, we're already getting DMs for, from people on Instagram, and places like that, even in our comments here on YouTube saying, look, I am panicking. I am worried. I'm about to come out of this fixed rate thing. My costs are spiraling. I don't know what to do, okay? And if you're in that place right now, my suggestions um, would, would straight away be, and I've been saying this forever, I've been saying this even for three years, is overpay your mortgage. I couldn't like, I don't know how to stress that enough. Like people often say to me, oh yeah, should I overpay? Should I invest? I'm like, listen, you need to read the writing on the wall, which is these rate rises are not going anywhere soon. They're not going down, they're gonna be going up. So what you want is to reduce your pain if you can, obviously, because I know like not everybody's budget can, can, like, um, can, can accommodate that. But if your budget can accommodate it, do everything you can to first of all be strict about your budgeting, because lifestyle is everything. You know, because every pound you spend, I was thinking about this as I was driving home actually to make this video. Every pound we spend has an opportunity cost. First, you have to put a lot of energy to make that one pound or one dollar or whatever it is. And then that money then has the opportunity cost of if you spend that money on your takeaway or on holiday or whatever, not saying you shouldn't go on holiday, but whatever you spend that money on, there is then that opportunity cost of what that money could have done, what it could have helped you to achieve, 
alternatively. So I'm saying that to say that budgeting exercise is not just, you know, doesn't sound like nice words. This is, this is, this is real. You need to take this seriously and think, where can I get that buffer to help me reduce my pain by overpaying if I need to, okay? Now, <coughs> excuse me, uh, what if you're struggling to pay your mortgage right now? What should you do? I know that's real for people right now. Uh, first is, first thing I'd say is, um, this is obviously massive anxiety for a lot of people right now, but the thing to mention is that uh, missing a single payment on your mortgage has the impact of obviously affecting your credit file. So we want to do everything possible not to have a late payment on the mortgage because it has an adverse impact, which means that any future rates you get might be higher and so on. It's a bit of a, a, a spiral downwards. You want to try and avoid that. First thing to mention is speak to your lender immediately. Okay, you want to start to communicate. So there are options, for example, uh, those options include maybe you going on a mortgage holiday. Obviously, you don't, I, in fact, I hate that word holiday because it implies like you're just chilling, but in actual fact, you're actually accumulating more debt when you're on a mortgage holiday. Your payments will likely be higher. In fact, they will be higher, not likely. Yeah, and the second option is to potentially go on interest only, but that has that depends a lot on how much you're currently earning, how much loan to value you have, all those things. There'll be some some form of an assessment that's made. Another option which I really dislike, but I know is a necessity for a lot of people, is to adjust the number of years on your mortgage right now. Yeah, some people might say, oh, do you know what? Temporarily, I want to increase my mortgage from say 25 years to 35 years. But one thing I do want to flag to you guys and make really clear, because not, not a lot of us have the, the pleasure of understanding the, the maths of compound interest. What I want to flag is that, let's say you borrowed 300K, making that up, this is just hypothetical, as your mortgage, and you're paying a 5% interest rate. Going from 25 years to 35 years, over the term of that mortgage, that change, that one phone call you made to increase it by 10 years, will add over 100 grand in interest to your mortgage, which means you'll likely be working for even longer. So I'm just saying this because I want you to have a full picture. I'm not saying it in a negative way. I just, you know, we're here to help you elevate and move forward. I'm just sharing it to just help us have enough information to balance the competing decisions we need to make, yeah? Personally, I wouldn't try to increase my mortgage term, but I fully understand those who do, uh, because for a lot of people, it's a necessity. So I fully get that, okay? Now, speaking to renters, uh, if you're renting, again, these rate rises are a pain for landlords. I don't know if you've checked recently, but a lot of the houses being sold, a lot of the properties being sold right now are being sold by landlords who are getting rid of their properties because th the maths ain't just in mathing, in working. <laughs> the maths isn't working for a lot of people. So people are frustrated naturally and are looking to um, basically, you know, create a bit of relief for themselves by selling their properties. That means for those landlords who remain and who try to figure this stuff out, chances are they might pass on those rate rises onto uh, potential uh, renters, yeah? So do watch out for that, have a conversation with, you know, your landlord, but obviously you should know as well that those people will be driven by market conditions because they too are facing different challenges. One, th one thing I do want to mention is, I mentioned in our previous video, there are 100% mortgages out there right now, which again, man, I do not like personally, but I know and I understand that for some people that may, might be a solution. We've made a video about this before. I'll link to it below and above. Do go and check it out. Those products are out there without requiring to have a grand tour and so on. For a renter, that might be a preferred solution. In fact, my barber who I was speaking to, this is the exact dilemma. He'd love to get on a property ladder and he's asking himself, where is the government when you need them? How are they helping first time buyers? How are they helping people right now with his mortgage rises? This is a true concern that he has and a lot of people have. And it's a concern that I have too. Okay, speaking to first time buyers, my uh, observation, and, and again, this is, we have the, uh, the gift of having a lot of inbound queries and things coming to us. The observation we've found, and obviously simple maths, tells you that a lot of first time buyers are priced out basically. They can't afford properties at these rates of um, interest. That's just the, the, the true reality of what's going on right now. Uh, the rates continue to rise, so feel free to check them out as I mentioned, but the one thing I will point you to 
uh, is, um, is that video we made about 100% mortgages. If it's something you want to consider, I linked to it below uh, before and I'll link, to, I'll link to it below again for you, to, for you guys to check out if you need to do that, okay? Uh, looking at buy to let rates, a similar story across the board. Uh, Mortgage Works appears to be the main provider there offering, you know, fairly decent rates for investment purposes. Actually, the rates I saw for buy to let mortgages actually were actually lower than the rates for people on two year fits, which is really, really interesting for those people who are fortunate enough, obviously, to be uh, considering um, property investing in this uh, in this current climate. Now, looking at debts more generally, anyone with any existing fixed rate debts, whether it's a car loan or a personal loan or anything of that nature, will not be affected by, you know, these current uh, rate rises. Um, looking at credit cards, you know, this is a big thing for people right now. A lot of people are relying on credit cards, overdrafts. In fact, I, I read some research recently that the most used uh, source of funding for people aged 25 to 34 right now is family members. People are asking family members for money, for loans. And obviously, you know, money and relationships is a very difficult thing. Psychologically, you shouldn't even bring them together. You know, um, when it comes to friendships and, you know, families, it's a very, I must say, thorny subject to approach. But I understand the need for people to use, you know, various forms of debt because they are struggling completely. So again, with credit cards, um, a provider must give you some notice if they were going to incre increase the rates on your credit card. They wouldn't just do it automatically based on the rate rise of the, of the base rate. So uh, you may want to consider, you know, 0% balance uh, kind of credit card, 0% uh, balance transfer offers if those are available as a way to kind of manage your debt situation. But again, you know, do think very carefully when it comes to managing that sort of debt. And obviously with bigger debts, you know, I'd first of all say speak to a counsellor, a debt counsellor. It's a good idea to definitely speak to. There are lots of debt charities out there. Uh, speak to Step Change, I believe is one of them. Uh, there are many others out there that you can speak to. But one thing you might want to consider potentially after looking at the pros and cons is potentially uh, consolidating your debt if it works for you. Speaking to savers, this is a party moment for savers. Savers are laughing because, you know, the rates are ridiculously good right now. They're obviously, you know, relatively speaking. I'm looking here at money facts again, looking at regular savers, uh, savings accounts, for example. Uh, and when I look at that, I'm seeing here a 7% rate, 7% AER offered by First Direct. Yeah? Uh, uh, Lloyds Bank offering 6.25%. Uh, NatWest are offering 6.17% for a regular saver. And the term net is 12 months. You know, that's pretty good if you think about it. 7%, yeah? So you want to check those out if you, you know, if, if, you, if you are fortunate enough to have some savings at the moment. Uh, and then there are different rates as well, depending on what you want to get. ISA rates, some of the best ISA rates right now uh, are 5.01%. Easy access ISAs right now, looking at that right now, let me see what rates come up. Easy access, you've got Paragon offering 3.76%, okay? And Leeds Building Society offering 3.75% for easy access. Yeah, that means you have no notice, nothing like that. You get your return and life's good, yeah? If you're fortunate enough to be able to save in this moment. Now, uh, I should mention, you know, as I mentioned every single time with inflation still remaining quite high, even though those rates are fairly high, you know, a lot of the returns are still negative, okay? So, but those returns are great because they're guaranteed returns, right? So you wanna try and get that money if you can. Alternatively, make sure you're investing your money via a stocks and shares ISA or a lifetime ISA, depending on what your goals are specifically, okay? Now, investing, I haven't changed. Our strategy remains the same. It remains global, it remains passive, it remains uh, low cost, and it remains highly diversified using index funds and ETFs, um, to give us that global perspective. And we're also looking at dividend paying stocks. So that is our focus at the moment when it comes to investing. But overall, I wanna wrap up by actually sharing what the Bank of England shared. They said the money, and this is, I'll use their language here. It says the MPC would continue to monitor closely 
indications of persistent inflationary pressures in the economy as a whole, including the tightness of the labor market conditions and the behavior of wage and service price inflation. If there were to be evidence of more persistent pressures, then further tightening in monetary policy would be required. What do they mean? Let me translate that. That basically means if wages keep going up, if prices keep going up, they will be forced to increase the interest rates. Effectively, what they're telling us, if we had to read in between the lines, is that the Bank of England is basically getting us to refuse price increases. They're basically getting us to say, no, I will not pay for that more expensive holiday. No, I will not pay for that more expensive, I don't know, shopping or whatever, or I will not take that pay rise. That's effectively what's happening indirectly. If you read in between the lines with that language. To wrap up, I just want to say that lifestyle is a very important consideration in these times. And I know that you're already considering your lifestyle, but say, please consider it even more because the future direction of travel is that we are expecting even more pain. So your budgeting, your emergency fund will become even more important. That three to six months, you're gonna need that. So try and build that up as much as you can. At home, what I've been doing personally is selling stuff. I look around the house, I see stuff, I sold garden furniture, I sold an old guitar that I never used. I just, I've sold a jacket, I'm just selling stuff on eBay. eBay has been a good platform, not, a rec not you know, like whatever, like not a recommendation, but use them if you want. But basically, what I'm saying is there are different ways you can build an emergency fund. Try and look around your home and look for anything that means that you're saving and building that emergency budget, that emergency fund. Do it because we are going to be needing that in the near future. And of course, this isn't just about saving money and budgeting. You also need to look for ways to boost your income, which in a bizarre way obviously then creates more inflation, which means we're back in a spiral, which means the Bank of England increases more rates and it just carries on. But you know, so is the reality of things right now. People need to survive and they need to do what they need to survive to survive, okay? But overall, like, stay encouraged. There are things that are under our control that we can do right now to stay on top of things. Do you have, do you find moments in your, in your, in your day to do things that you enjoy? I know that with all this stuff, it can be very, very depressing, actually, is the word. And you can feel like you are just frustrated, overwhelmed, just like, it just doesn't feel worth it. Everything feels like you're being robbed every day. And I get that. So do find those moments in your day, those small things that bring joy to your life. Do please make sure you do your best to prioritize them because believe me, the stress and the worry does much bigger damage. And the little acts, the little steps we take to create a bit of joy in our lives will be much needed to keep us going forward. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. The next update will be on the 3rd of August, 2023. And I'll be back making that update to help you guys move forward. Other than that, take care, look after yourselves and your families. Bye for now.